Hey guys, uh, I hope you're well. I hope that's working. It is. So, I hope you're doing good. Um, I thought I would just talk you through lesson two on the OneNote. Um, so you can watch this if you want to. If you're if you're sick of me, um, you don't have to. <laughs> you can do this on your own. Um, but I'm just going to be explaining some of this stuff as we go through. All right. So we're looking at algorithm pseudocode programs. They're all very similar words. You might be wondering what they mean and what's the difference between the three. So I'll jump into that now. And, and before I do, these are things that are all examinable at a year 12 level. So yeah, I guess you're getting a head start on year 12 if you're planning to do this then. Right, so what's an algorithm? Basically, I guess in, in layman's terms, an algorithm is just laying out your idea um, step by step in a procedure-like format, right? That's basically using structured English to lay out what you want to do. So it might be like, I guess an, uh, a recipe is a pretty good um, version of an algorithm. The second, pseudocode, right? So this is sort of a step between the two. It's where you go, okay, I've come up with my recipe and my process, which is my algorithm. Now I'm going to use something that is kind of based off programming. So I'm going to use, this is uh, pseudocode is a universal planning language, basically. And it means that regardless of what language you plan to code in, you should be able to write your plan in pseudocode. So for example, I have a lot of experience with Python. If you're doing Visual Basic, you should be able to use the same pseudocode and make the same program in both. Right? Now, basically it's short, concise instructions, and it's based on the, I guess the, it's based on the, the idea that syntax is not necessarily important. Right? But you still gotta break things down as, 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 as simply as possible. And I'll go through some things that you can do in that in a second. And then lastly, a program is where you take the pseudocode and you make your program on the computer and you can run it and you can test it and all that stuff. So that's the difference between the three. Here's an example of the three. I'll make this a little bit bigger for you. So the algorithm, you know, start at the leftmost element of the array, one by one compare x with each element of the array. Okay. If x matches the element, return the index. If x doesn't match any of the elements, return negative one. Right? That's the algorithm. It's just saying very simply what the program is going to do. Now, this is um, some sort of seems to be some sort of very basic search thing. It might be it might be um, what you would use for a username and password, for example. You know, if your system has got, uh, I wouldn't store it in an array. It's not very secure, but on a basic level, right? Then for pseudocode, they're they're doing this in a function, which you don't have to do. But that's what they're doing. They're saying a bit more structured. Um, for index from zero to the length of the list, if the list with the value, the variable index is equal to the search term, then return that index. And the if <coughs> and the loop and return negative one. All right? That's a little bit confusing if you've never done programming before, but basically that's just going to iterate through a list checking this variable index against the search term. So you've typed in, I don't know, whatever you want to search for. And this is checking to see if what is in this stored array matches that. And then if you can't find anything, it returns negative one. Okay. Then they've taken that and they've coded it in C++. Yeah, okay. There's an int search, an array, an n value and an x value. There's an int i for i is equal to zero, i less than n, increase the i. Okay, so I guess breaking that down into English, that's basically saying that I'm setting a variable called i to the value of zero until the letter or the, the value of i is greater than n. You're going to iterate through this list, and at the end, you're going to add one to i every single time. That's so going to say if the array 
value of i is equal to x, which is the search term, I would assume, return i, otherwise return negative 1. Bit of a mouthful. Don't worry, you get used to it. One thing that this person's done to make it hard is they haven't used proper variable names. This could be what you're looking at, right? This is this is probably you right now. All right. All right. Algorithms. So, process of rules to be followed, calculations, or other problem-solving operations, especially by a computer. So think of it as a set of instructions. For example, start. Pick up the phone. Dial a number. Say whatever you have to say. Hang up the phone. End. Right. That is a algorithm for making a phone call. Now, they can get more complicated than that. This is an algorithm for what to watch on Netflix. And I tried to make it big so you can see it, but it seems like... Oops, I got the wrong way. So, I'm not going to make you go through this whole thing, but, uh, you know, are you watching with children? Let's say, yeah. Do you have to watch it with them? Let's say no. Girls only, no. Muppets on music. Let's say Muppets. Watch Sesame Street, right? There's a whole bunch more. Um, there's a massive algorithm here. I think if you're saying no, it leads into this large section here. There's a whole lot of stuff on there to watch. All right. I'll let you explore that if you want to. Okay, so basically when we're talking coding and algorithm, we start with a single beginning and a single end and it solves some sort of problem. Fine. We try and break it down into the simplest steps possible. As I was saying in the last class, computers are really dumb. So the algorithm for Instagram. You do a post. There's some sort of content scoring quality that is assigned to that post. Right. Um, things like how often do you post? Are you part of a community? Um, are you active in other people's Instagrams? Right. That sort of stuff may vary where you're or how many, how high up the feed your your Instagram post would be. Right. Um, it sets it to a group of relevant followers. Things that get asked here are things like, does the post get a lot of engagement? Are uh, people spending a long time looking at it? Is it being shared? Right? If yes, then it's like, okay, let's go further. Do these people look at your profile? Is it a recent post? Is the content relevant? These sorts of things will push it into more people's discovers and that sort of stuff. I'm not going to go through the YouTube algorithm. I'm sure you can you can get an idea of what it's what it's like. Same sort of process really. Now, the constructs are used in an algorithm. These words will get thrown around a bit. Uh, sequence, such sequence, sequential, selection, iteration. Sequence or sequential, it's basically the events in order. Right? So, to make lemonade, you fill a cup with water, you open lemonade flavor packets, you put the contents in a glass, and you stir. American lemonade. Right? You have to do them in order. If you skip any of these steps, it will not work, right? If you don't fill a cup with water, but then you pour flavor packet into your glass and stir, you will have a cup of lemonade packet flavor, right? If you fill a cup with water, pour it into the glass and stir, you'll have a glass with water in it. You can't skip any of these steps. So, I already talked about that. Selection. This is where things get a bit more interesting. It's based on the idea of if something were to happen, then do this. Otherwise, do this. It's the element of choice. All right? And that's the selection. So, um, you know, it might be something like, let's say I only like pretzels from Coles. You'll say, I'm going to do the shopping. And I say, if you're shopping at Coles, get pretzels. Otherwise, don't. And it's that choice. It is the selection. Lastly, iteration, repetition, 
it's a loop. It's something that happens over and over and over again, right? So it's um, you know, I could I could probably give you a breakdown of the iteration of what I'm doing whilst teaching from home. It's um, you know, it's get on the computer, check emails, respond to emails, get annoyed, have a break, probably snack, get on the computer, check my emails, and it just repeats and it repeats and it repeats until like five o'clock. Right. That's my iteration. All right. So we're talking about pseudocodes. Uh, that's when you take your algorithm, you give it a bit more structure, try and use words that are common with a lot of programming languages. Um, and the, one of the reasons why pseudocode is so important is because on year 12 exams, they're not allowed to examine you on a particular language. You can only examine you on pseudocode, right? So pseudocode is very important. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There are some syntax that go with it, but for now, we're not going to bother with that. That's something you can learn later on. As long as you get the idea of how it works, and that's fine. So the basic flow, it just reads through each line in order. Right, there are control things in place. You can do selection, you can do um, sequence, you can do iteration. Um, yeah. All right, so here's an example. <clears throat> Start washing the dishes. While washing the dishes, so while is a key word for me as a programmer, I know that means this is an iterative loop. Right? For you, you might not be so sure. So while there are dishes remaining, Take a dish, you put it in the water. While, again, another loop, the dish is dirty, then it's inside of that while loop. If the dish is a pot, you scrub it with a steel pad. Otherwise, you wipe it with a sponge. Right? And then you get to the end of that while loop. So think about it. You've got your dish, put it in the water, you wash it with a sponge, you pull it out, is it still dirty? Yes. I put it back in, I keep washing it. It's still dirty? No. Okay. I put it away. Right? Um, so we can see iteration in there. Just to jump back a little bit, there's also um, a selection. If the dish is a pot, use a steel pad. Otherwise, use a sponge. Something to think about. So depending on what dish you have, you use different things. After that, you remove the dish from the water, you put in the dish rack. And then we have another end while, which is referring right back to the start with the while dishes remaining. So once you've finished washing that dish, you put it in the rack, you look to see if there are more dishes. Right? It just makes sense. Or maybe you don't. I don't know. Help you, help you folks with the dishes. All right. Here are some key words that are relating to pseudocode. All right? Just things to keep in mind. You can use start, stop, or beginning, end. Doesn't really matter. That indicates the start and the end for program. Oh, I'm boring myself, right? Pretty straightforward. Cool. So you've got actions in order. They're just steps. That's a sequence. We talked about selection. If this, then this. Um, there's uh, an if else which is an extended version, which is where you add, um, rather than have one condition, you have a condition and an otherwise. Right? So you might have, um, you know, I like pretzels from Coles, I like chips from Woolies. You say I'm going shopping and I would say, if going to Coles, get pretzels, else get chips, right? Um, whereas the first one is just a condition if going to hold get pressed. There's a slight difference between those two. And there's actually um, another one that is not here that's called ALIF, which is uh, where you have three or more options. So if going to cold, get pretzels. If going to Aldi, get nothing. <laughs> if going to Woolies, get chips. Right? Um, yeah. Okay. So we talked about the iterations. The while condition means that the condition has to be true to start. 
So while their additions do dishes, they repeat until, or oh, it's usually called repeat loop. The condition um, continues until it's um, it's true. So I guess um, so it always does it the first time. So for example, a repeat might be used for digging a hole. Right? You go into the garden, like you're not even going to bother to check if there already a hole because you haven't dug a hole. So shovel your shovel into the ground, dig out some dirt. Do you get to whatever you're digging to? <laughs> no? Okay. You know, it's like the condition's done after the first action. Very slight difference there. They're used for very similar things. All right. There's a couple of activities. I'm going to explain them and give you the opportunity to do them. So, firstly, activity one, mix and match. Boom. There are a couple of things here that you need to mix and match. A hint may be that I've already talked about something. Activity two, writing simple algorithms. Write an algorithm to get Mario through the squares collecting mushrooms, but not coins. You may need to use an if. And then the last one's a pseudocode. There's a couple of questions about pseudocode here, maybe based off the elements. All right. So I'll get through this stuff. Not particularly exciting, but there's a few. Um, I guess I'll talk quickly about this. If I want to get Mario from where he is now to D1, I could just time the move right three squares. All right. If I wanted to get him um, to D4, I'd say move down three squares. Right? If I wanted to get him to pick up all these, I would have to tell him to go to here, then to here, then to here, 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 here. Right? So it's based off the algorithm. So you have to shut it back. And then there's a couple, yeah, and then there's a couple of questions based off the okay, give them a go. Try your best and see if you really grasp an understanding of what I've been talking about. And that's it. So, um, go do some work.